It's right here in Chicago. Okay, so Pyrex is a 100-year-old brand. So we're World Kitchen. We're essentially a holding company um, for all these different house-first brands. A little bit like juggling all these electronic devices so they can record everything and I can advance the slides. Um, but our best-known brands are really Corral and Pyrex. And Pyrex is 100 years old. It's still made in Charleroi, Pennsylvania. Pretty incredible. And we actually produce a tremendous amount of product that we export overseas. So I'm next going to play just a little short introductory video that's about Pyrex and the 100-year anniversary. Hopefully. This there we go. is the story of how a simple railroad lantern and some American ingenuity forever changed the way the world cooks. Visionary glass scientist Jesse Littleton had an idea. Lantern glass was made to stand up to extreme temperatures. Why not cook in it? His wife Bessie did, and Pyrex was born. 100 years later, that one lantern has inspired generations of family recipes, treasured moments, and lifelong memories. And that American ingenuity, it's still alive and well in the small town of Charleroi, Pennsylvania, where America's most trusted glass brand is still proudly made. In the years to come, Pyrex will continue to shine on clear and strong in every delicious moment. So what's really sort of fun about this whole area, many, I would say the vast majority of you are younger than me, so you've grown up with digital marketing. If Pyrex's anniversary had been in 2005, we would have had a very traditional program. We'd have a bunch of really cool events that we'll talk about, we'd do some advertising, probably a lot of print advertising, maybe if we could afford it, TV advertising, and we'd have partnerships with our retailers. But because it's 2015, digital really has to underlie everything that we do. So digital was a key element throughout this program. So I'm going to talk about the events we did and the advertising we did and our partnerships. But in every scenario, digital was critical. OK, so these are some of the many, many events we did for Pyrex 100. And this is through our PR agency. So we kicked it off at the House First Show right here in Chicago. Um, really an incredibly fun event. And we made the world's largest measuring cup. I think it's 1,000 times the the regular Pyrex cup size and had the Guinness Book of World Records come, et cetera, and had really a huge crowd come to see that. So it was a great unveiling. But even with this, the way we really drove attendance to that was not just the traditional trade show, have a you know drop off at the hotel the night before with a belly band around a trade magazine. We drove people to this digitally and socially. So our next event was actually in Charleroi, Pennsylvania, and I, I think, Alina, you were there in person. And this is an incredible event as well. We drew very, very well from the town. We did all sorts of things like taking over, making billboards. They renamed the town Pyrex, Pennsylvania for 100 days. Again, a great event, but again, critical to have the social tie-in to both drive traffic and make this live on to a much, much larger audience. And then to the Indy 500. Now, this is an incredibly large, incredibly popular event. A little hard to understand why Pyrex would actually be at such an event, but we kind of tied it into the whole milk chugging tradition when they win. And there are a really large number of sort of Heart of America people who love an American-made brand and love Pyrex, and we got great attendance. But again, to have sort of a share of voice at such a huge event, very critical to have um, sort of a social media and digital advertising tie-in. So then our, our next event was taking it to the Country Music Festival. And this is also very, very popular, worked very well. We found, I think, probably there even more of our core audience members than at the Indy 500. And people absolutely love sort of posing with this cup. And I think that was one of the key elements as you're looking at your programs. What sort of moment can you get so people can actually have an iconic image that they want to share across social media? And I think in, in our case, it was pretty much always the big cup that they loved posing with, or raising their, um, we had a raise your glass sort of tagline as well in our campaign, and raising the glass in their own kitchen. And then the Corning Museum, so our company grew out of Corning Consumer Products, and then a company here in Chicago called General Housewares. 
So we're kind of the, the product of a, a divestment by Corning of their consumer business. But we still have very tight connection to Corning New York and the Corning Museum of Glass is really the world's leading glass museum and on the cutting edge of technology. And they did an incredible retrospective on 100 years of Pyrex in the home in America. And we sponsor this exhibit. And there's a lot of great digital tie-ins as well. You know, we work very closely with them on social media. And also, we have an incredible website that they put together that has all sorts of historical patterns over the past 100 years. People are insanely passionate about Pyrex and collecting. And this is a great way for us to take in the corporate environment where we normally wouldn't have time to sort of, um, you know, catalog the pieces from 1931, the museum was more than happy to do that and provide that resource to the public. And then we had a great uh, sort of retro event at Macy's Herald Square in New York. Macy's is one of our biggest customers, and they were working on relaunching their home store environment. And again, we moved the cup along on sort of our mobile tour there, had great attendance and a lot of people engaging with it. And then our culminating event was for the 4th of July in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is our most well-attended event. I think we had uh, roughly 10,000 people go through our um, display and pick up all the various Pyrex items, take their photos, et cetera. So underlying all these events, though, is the digital component. So uh, I'm sure you guys work a little bit with um, advertising. And what we did to really drive attendance to these events was geographically targeted mobile advertising. And there's a huge number of partners that you can utilize for this. In, in this case, we used a, a relatively new startup company called Moasis. And so when, when we were doing the trade show in Chicago, versus the normal approach where we just try and put something in a trade publication, we actually targeted the geographical radius around McCormick Place. And then to the extent we could, we demographically targeted people who looked as though they would be convention attendees. And then we put ads into like their weather app, et cetera, so that they would hopefully come. And that worked incredibly well. I think we had like four or 500 people for the unveiling in our booth. So very successful. Then in other, other sort of approaches that we took to advertising, um, we had a fairly constrained budget, and I'm sure you guys run into this as well. So there's many options, obviously, for running your videos. You can run them on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. We wanted to maximize viewership while you know, sort of lowering our costs per complete video view to the absolute minimum. So we worked with a, a network, Yumi, that actually buys, in a way, remainders of video ads. Now, we did have a demographic target, so that worked out very well to reach the audience we want. And we were delighted to actually get a lot of play on sites such as All Recipes, which we would have actually picked had we had the choice, but doing this through sort of a remnant network where we're paying maybe a fifth as much per view. I think that's something to look into. If, you, if you're able to target the video, then I think it's worth doing. If you're just blasting it out to everyone, probably not worth the investment. And then another example of our geographical advertising, this again was for the event in Charleroi, uh, which is a very, very small town. I think about 50 miles outside of Pittsburgh. So it was critical that we do something to actually drive people to this event. So we started running these ads, I think, four days prior in a 50-mile radius of Charleroi and with a target really of, I think, essentially moms, you know, like our core customer, uh, probably 25 to 55, you know, females with children. And I think we did well drawing a pretty big crowd. So another advertising that we did was just your average run of site where we could get reasonably good values on, you know, say a local TV station, et cetera. And then also um, in more targeted venues. So one of the great benefits of Pyrex, which uh, I hope all of you have it in your home, I find it's in probably about 90% plus of America households, but it's a very healthy item for storage and cooking. And so we found that tie into like everyday health was really reaching our targeted customer very, very well. So that was a targeted ad buy that worked very efficiently. And a critical part of our program, and I don't know how this relates to everyone because we primarily sell through other companies such as Walmart or Macy's or Amazon. Um, our partnerships with them were really as or more critical than what we did online. So we did very large programs with Macy's, um, having actually a shop in a Pyrex 100 environment on Macy's.com, and then a really terrific placement that's still up on Amazon, 
where we were able to take our creative and you know, adapt that and make a Pyrex 100 environment on their own sites. And then continuing, you know, we sell um, really Pyrex in most of the world, and we have a very, very strong business in Canada. And Canada introduces that extra sort of element that many of you probably run into of multi-language. So we always have to have French and English versions of all of our creative for Canada. And then in many cases, we use Spanish versions as well, so we reach our total audience here in the US also. And another critical element, I, I've always been sort of critical of the term microsite. I think it's used a lot in the industry. We didn't build a specific microsite because that would tend to take away or dilute our traffic. But we have a main site for the Pyrex brand, which is pyrexware.com. And we definitely created a home and a location on pyrexware.com, which is pyrex100.com. And it had a lot of really excellent interactive features. So, uh, we had a, a little widget that enabled people to enter our giveaway for the 100 days of Pyrex. So we ended up with uh, 22,005 um, entries, which we're very, very pleased with. Uh, we had you know, ongoing information sort of interactive about the tour. Uh, we, had, um, we use a product called Olapic to curate image content. So we used Olapic to have an ongoing feed of Pyrex 100 images that people were posting. And then we also had, because it's very, very fun to look back at all this great retro products, sort of what happened in that year in the past and what were some of the really cool, amazing vintage ads that we had out there. And then in terms of retail partnerships, so I talked a little bit about what we did online, but even though we're digitally focused and socially focused, you find that having a physical world event will give you something to talk about and something to promote. So we had a terrific um, partnership again with Macy's in several markets, but I thought the window in Pittsburgh was particularly cool. So we did a really fun event with them to unveil that. And they had a ton of product in the store and you can see sort of how the point of purchase displays, it all ties in and it's all a cohesive image, it makes sense to the consumer. And then in-store activation, these are actually um, Army and Navy exchange stores, uh, but it just shows you how broadly we could get this message across and use that packaging to drive. And this, as I said, was also a global program. So I don't know, um, David Jones is a really terrific department store in Australia. I wish our stores here were as good, actually. All the Macy's is close. And they did this incredible window display. So this is during the day. And this is the Pyrex Love sort of display during the evening. It's really pretty spectacular. And then Pyrex is a super strong brand in South America and Latin America. And there's some really amazing programs that people executed. And my personal favorite is this is, I think, actually from the Pyrex Peru Facebook page, the Falabella department store. And what they did, they had that huge Pyrex 100 sort of logo outside. They have bags hanging off it and just a really cool integration. So this is the heart of what we did socially. So all of those things, the events, the partnerships, having our own site, running ads, you know, having people see 10 or 20 million videos, that was great. That got us a certain number of impressions. But then we knew we needed to take it to the next level socially. So we partnered with our social agency to do that. And we wanted to you know, have a sort of multi-component campaign that involved influencers, that involved getting lots of great user-generated content, Again, we did our, I think Elena, we ended up doing it under just Pyrex 100 was the hashtag for them to. So we had this idea of them raising a Pyrex vessel, this raise your glass concept. And we had literally thousands of people submit great photos. And we'll show you a couple, but there's, there's a ton more out there. And we got really um, pretty incredible results from this campaign. Um, actually, I think we talk about it here. Oh yeah, so this is our goal with the Pyrex 100 theme, the 100 days of giveaways, getting content for the Razor Glass sweeps on Instagram and Twitter, and celebrating the century of cooking with Pyrex. So then the content production, you know, we had 51 blog posts, 66 Razor Glass sweeps images, 9,000 social shares. Um, the inspiration board on Pinterest is really incredible. So actually, we should send a link out to people. I'd encourage you to take a look at it. It really exceeded our expectations. The very large number of entries with the sweepstakes images. Our Twitter party, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail. And then even though it's kind of old school and, and we sometimes are not sure how important the uh, um, 
you know, sort of press releases and things are, they went out to a tremendous number of media outlets. And what was cool is these actually got picked up very, very well in new media. So, so this really is the results. And this campaign is actually still going on. It has momentum through the end of the year. So these are our results as of probably August. So they're building from here. But we had over 145 million impressions. And people always inflate and throw around these impression terms a lot. I've noticed that particularly with our PR agency. They'll say for this total program, we had like a billion impressions. And you know, I point out to them, there's only 300 million households and, or 300 million people in the US and 100 million households. So it's a little challenging. But we felt very, very good that in a way, we're almost understating the degree of interaction. Now, we're not saying this is 145 million different unique people, but some people were obsessively engaged and engaged with us every day. And then some people we reached once, but we felt like it was a terrific number. And then a lot of engaging online, almost a hundred, well, I'm sure it's well over 100,000 people now. And then really just a, an ancillary benefit, but just gaining followers in the new media channels where you know, Twitter and Instagram, et cetera, where we did not have as many before, we picked up people. So the influencer blog content, which I think you all work in this area every day, but we were extremely pleased with the quality of the user-generated content. Because as we all know, it's sort of hit or miss. You go out, you pick 20 people that you want to work with. You've never worked with them before. And we were very impressed with the quality of these recipes, the quality of their posts, and the passion that they really brought to Pyrex. And of course, they got really good impressions and engagements as well. Facebook, we just continue to post relentlessly. And I'm always impressed by how frequently we're able to do that. Got a, a good number of primary impressions and engagements. Pinterest, though, actually had more impressions than Facebook, sort of the organic impressions. Uh, from slightly uh, 193 more, more posts than we had on Facebook. And again, decent engagement. And I think that's because we find anything about food, which I'm sure you might find this as well, if we're talking about food, we're talking about treats, people love it, and they really will engage with it and are very passionate about it. And I should really have not even put Google Plus on here. It's just like, you know, we have to do it, but not for much longer. <laughs> But Instagram is, is, for us, very growing, and people are very passionate and a critical channel. So we were pleased, again, with the number of impressions and engagements we received. Twitter, though, for us, was probably the star of this campaign. So this was our normal Twitter activity. I didn't actually give you guys a lot of background on World Kitchen. So we have um, Facebook pages for our six primary brands. And then we have Instagram or Pinterest pages for the brands that are interesting. You know, like Corel is going to be interesting visually. We have other brands that I won't say the name of that probably aren't interesting visually. So then we just don't have a Pinterest page for them, even though they get mad about it. But for Twitter, being a kind of boring and not huge company, we do not have six Twitter accounts because we would never post anything. We only have one. So we tie everything back to our at World Kitchen LLC Twitter account. But we really got a lot of impressions and a lot of interest from this. And then we also did, and I think that's next, a Twitter party. And this wildly exceeded my expectations. So I know you've all run Twitter parties, et cetera. But it was particularly fun for me because we had um, one of our global marketing meetings that was running during the inception of this Twitter party. And I was, of course, surreptitiously checking my phone to see how things were going. And it was amazing to see the number of tweets we were getting and how frequently they were coming in. So I would refresh it, and there'd be like 100 more tweets every time I was looking. So really, really very, very great results. And I think, again, it's the content. And the, the people that hosted it, I think, were great in terms of kicking it off. But then also, this is a group that's very, very passionate about food and very passionate about Pyrex and Made in America and family. And it all sort of came together. Another really, really cool thing that we did with our agency that I think is relatively new, we were pleased with all of the sort of primary or organic impressions we got and all the people we reached. But when we had a great apple pie recipe or pineapple recipe, we wanted a larger audience for it. So they offer this secondary syndication novel, model that I think is pretty new, and we'd be happy to put you in touch with them. And they're able to take great content 
and get it in front of an additional audience. And that was very effective for us. So it got us, again, another 76 million plus impressions and 42,000 engagements. So we thought that's really sort of a novel approach that I haven't seen a lot. You know, mostly we'll do a program, we'll get great things, people will engage, and then it sort of lies fallow for a bit. And here we push it out to more people for whom it was relevant. And then we're just doing a few more things for the end of the year. And this is just an example of some of the great content that people pulled together. I think actually that lemon meringue one might have been the number one most popular. <laughs> but the quality of what people are doing in their kitchen is just literally unbelievable to me. So we have our sort of professionally produced images that you'll see that we go up to Minneapolis and we do at the General Mills studio and we're, we love those, we're very proud of them. But considering that people are literally doing this in their kitchen, the, the level that they're working at, it's just constantly amazing to me. A few more. Oh, and this is, yeah, that's the Pyrex 100 contest. So this is actually really, really fun. So I thought, yeah, the raise, raise your glass hashtag where we got people to raise any number of vessels. It was typically that measuring cup, but some people had like a casserole dish or whatever they wanted. And another cool element where we have these unique features is there's a little startup company down in the Carolinas called Photofy. And we were able to put a, a little sort of filter on so that they could add some pizzazz to their photos and, and have fun with that. And this is just some of the content from the Twitter party. And again, I was just really, you know, we've had them before. We've all seen a bunch of them, but this is unusually sort of fun and engaging. And then it all sort of ended up in uh, a good year. And we have a great culmination video that our friends at Sweet put together, which should run. And it'll kind of sum up the year. Recently, one of America's most beloved brands turned 100. We decided to have a celebration, a big one, world record day. We started in Chicago, where Pyrex was the biggest thing at the International Hustler Show, and took it on the road to the small town of Charleroi, Pennsylvania, where the celebration took on very special meaning, because this is where Pyrex is still proudly made today. Anytime you can make something that's known around the world as one of the best in its uh, class, it certainly brings a lot of pride to our community and the people who not only work, but the people who live here.
that's a great video that Sweet put together for us. But you know, it's really interesting being in marketing. You know, it's it's better now, I think, because of the internet and people know more about different professions. But I've often struggled to explain to people what I do. And what I love about Pyrex is it makes it all so very clear. So we have 500 union employees in Charleroi that we keep employed. We bring this really terrific glassware product to homes all over America through our retail partners and actually all through the world. And then they use it and it makes their everyday lives better. So I really love that part, that this is one of those campaigns where it's very clear and very fun and very engaging with the consumers. So. Great, so a pleasure speaking with you guys this morning, and then I'm sure you have potentially some detailed questions, which is what I'll defer to Alina, as I'm more of a total digital guy, I admit social, I like it, but I'm more of a LinkedIn person than anything else. <laughs> but terrific, thanks. Good job. Thank you.